Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the Beauty My Lab from Scratch video series. Now that you actually get your domain controller up and running, in this video we are going to add an additional domain controller to our first domain controller. I just, just, as, just as an add up, I really wanted to mention something that when I restarted my PC, uh, which is the server, I find out that I'm unable to log in to the machine. So I think the reason why that happened is because I didn't set the password for the user that was used to deploy the server. So meaning that I only set the password for the admin, but I didn't set the password for the for Peter uh, user that I'm that I'm using. So right now I'm able to log in as to the webwalker slash Peter. So everything is looking great. Now let's deploy our second domain controller. But before we do that, most of the time uh, as a best practice, people normally ask to set up a static uh, static IP address for your domain controller, which I'm going to do in this video by going to um, the Ethernet, just double click on it and right click, go to properties, then do IP before this one. Most of the time, I normally remove the IPv6 because I don't need it at the moment. So I'm going to go with IPv4 and I'm going to set up the same information that I have on this computer. So let's go to CMD and I'm going to type ipconfig. So um, I'm going to set up this information. the same information here so that we can have a static IP address for the domain controller so I'm going to put it I just need to highlight it click enter and that is how I'm able to copy it so um, with the preferred DNS most of the time if you come here after provisioning your domain controller you'll be able to see that you know they are using the same IP address so most of the time I pick up because this I want this to become my DNS server in the future so I'm going to push it here any way you do it is going to work to be honest but hey why not let's let's give it a try so I'm just going to put it here I can now put the 127.0.0.1 so click on OK, OK, and now you see something right here that we no longer have network and now everything is fixed. So that's everything you have to do here. So everything is looking good. Now let's go ahead and deploy a new machine, which is going to be our second domain controller. All right, the same process, Windows Server 2019, the same process. You choose the same thing. I'm gonna put my name, Peter. So you click on next. Okay, yes. So we say DC02, next, next, next. I'm actually satisfied with every information, the default information, so I don't need to change anything unless you really want to play around with some information. So next, 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 finish. All right, so the same way, you say DC01, DC02. So why are we deploying the delivery uh, domain control? I always say delivery control, I don't know why. Our domain controller, second domain controller is just because 
Well, most of the people do it because of load balancing, but to be honest, for this tutorial, you might not need it. To be honest, you might not need it, but I really wanted to show you how you can add an additional domain controller to the first domain controller. That's the reason why I'm doing this. So I'm going to let it do a thing right here, just as we did at the beginning. And once everything is done, I'll be right back. All right, it looks like we are have our DC2 hop and runner. Remember, the first thing that we need to do is to make sure we change the name DC02 in this case. And we click on OK. And after that, it's going to ask us to restart. So let's wait for that to come back up. I hope you're enjoying your time right here. If you do have any question, please put it down in the comment section and I'll be very glad to, to work with you if you are having any technical difficulties actually uh, in deploying this additional server. Now that we have our server on, let's continue. Uh, please remember that um, on this server, we already uh, make sure that we have the static uh, IP address on it. So we know the IP address name because you are going to need it here because we need to make sure that this server is actually being able to see this. So two things I wanted to bring up here and uh, please pay close attention. Uh, I find out that even though I have these two devices on the same network, they are not able to see each other. So how do I fix that? Before before provisioning this uh, domain controller, please try to come over here and let's navigate to advance the vendor firewall security. So once we get there, we're going to go to inbound rules and uh, we're going to go for I think is a file so I'm print to sharing so these we wanted to enable the rules for both of them if you can that is on DC2 and also we wanted to do the same thing on DC1 this will help us to actually avoid any uh, communication issue in the future most of the time I do it for most of my server when I, I'm actually deploying them through you see already on the DC one I have it on already so and I don't want to disable it so now let's get started so now that we have for the DC one we have the IP address for a, let's see 133 I would like the IP address for this one to be 134 so what you might need to do is write down the IP address here because is it domain controller and you don't want the IP address to be changing so since I'm going to make it uh, 192.168.78.34 so I'm going to come over here go to the local server and um, like I mentioned in the past I normally turn this off for the admin so I come over here properties and I come over here and I set up the IP address. So I think um, I might have to type it. <laughs> I actually wanted to copy and paste uh, one. I don't let me be lazy for this one. So 192.168.78. Um, so the same thing with the uh, gateway is normally 
192, 168, 78, I think two, if I'm not mistaken. So I can check it out, you know, just go to CMD, IP config, yeah, 782. All right, so here you wanted to put the IP address of the DC one. So I'm going to go 192, 168, 78, 133. So I have one two seven zero zero one. I mean, why not? So look at this. Actually, it's going to disconnect for a while and it's going to come back again. Awesome. So now we're going to join this server first to the domain before we actually prom uh, add it. Uh, promoted as a as a second domain controller. So let's go over here, and I'm going to come here. I'm going to say webworker dot local. Now you see that the reason why it pop up for me to enter my credentials is because they're able to see each other. So I'm going to put one of my admin credentials. Oh, it said the password is incorrect. Let's do it again. Okay, all right, remember, I still don't set a password for this Peter user, so I'm going to use the administrator account. And that should work. Okay, close and restart. So now I don't want to forget, I'm just going to go to, while we have DC2 restarting, I'm going to go to Active Directory User and Computer and locate my user, which is Peter, and I'm going to set, uh, yeah, I suppose, to stay, I mean, I can go to the local one, but I can just go ahead and reset the password right here. And I'm going to uncheck this. Good. So we're good to go right there. And now when you click on this, instead of logging in with Peter, please come and log in as a domain always. Please don't forget. So let me try Peter. We should have a password already for that on that domain. You see, everything is working fine. All right, so we go here and just do CMD. Yeah, I always wanted to check, you see, that I'm logging in. Who am I? Okay, web workout, Peter. All right, good. Remember, we haven't joined this <laughs> as a, we haven't had this domain to be an additional domain controller yet. We're just making sure that both of these, for example, if you go to CMD, I can ping dc01.webworker.local. Oh no, I didn't spell it right. Now you can see that I'm able to ping that domain controller. And if the domain controller also should say no, ping, dc 02webwalkerlocal we're able to get reply. So we're good right here. So we go ahead and bring our server manager up. And um, we're going to add roles and features. So we just need to wait a little bit see <laughs> so let's see what's happening here okay nothing is happening so we just need to add rules and features the same thing but something is changing right here so now it's all about next next 
now we do the active directory domain services click add next 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 and we wanted to restart the server just in case of anything so we're just gonna wait a little bit until this is done and i'll be right back All right, look at that. We got an error. Okay. Do anyone know why we get an error right here on DC2? It said you don't have you did not have the adequate um, right user right to make the changes to this digit computer. All right, look like Peter does not have the administrator rights yet. So we're going to go to DC1 and we're going to check the role for Peter. So maybe most of the time we're just going to be using these admin credentials. So I'm going to log in it's because the admin is member of everything. So I'm going to be using this user. So I'm going to log out. So, and I'm going to sign in as an admin. I mean, I can make Peter to become an administrator right away to get up, but I'm just showing you, just in case you are doing it by yourself, you might be wondering why is this not working for me? Administrator, okay. What's going on, Peter? Okay, let's see what's going on. Administrator. Let's see. Okay. Uh, it looks like I might need to, well, some troubleshooting right here. So I might need to either I uh, just make Peter to be part of the administrator group. Yeah, we are maybe domain admin. Let's see. Okay, maybe that is the right is looking for. So let's go for it. So these are things that you might actually come across when you are doing yours. And uh, it might actually, you know, this is how we learn. You know, when you see something going on, either it's going to be a permission issue or it's going to be a different issue. So the idea is just go ahead and fix it. All right, so let's go back to adding of the roles again. The same thing and uh, we go here next next restart if needed all right so let's see now what's going on as installation started all right it looks like we actually have the right permission right now to install this role. Let's see what is going to happen. Okay, it looks like. So now we can zip some coffee. It shouldn't take that long though. So like I mentioned, please always make sure that when you're logging into the 
domain controller or any other server in your environment, please make sure that you are logging in with a member user and not a local user. Most of the time, this actually causes a lot of issue. Like you're just wondering why this thing is not working. Why is not working for me? So most of the time, I find out that I'm actually logging as a local user and not a member, domain member user. So now it's finished. Okay, we can actually promote this server. Now, if you remember on our first DC, we actually choose this option. Now we're not going to choose that anymore because this is our second DC. So we're going to choose the first option because we wanted to add a domain controller to an existing one. So let's go for it again. So it's say, okay, this is our, this is our domain, you can see. And also he's asking us to supply a credential. So we're good with this credential now. So we click on next. It's going to ask us if we want to make this domain as a DNS server. Yes, global catalog. Yes, I don't want to make this domain as a read only domain controller. So I'm going to put my password. All right, click on next. Next. So I can replicate this from any domain controller or I can just choose the DC one uh, for the replication, but any is okay for me or if you have any installation media, but I'm fine with this. The same way, I'm good with that. Bingo. So we have everything checked. Everything is looking good right now. Then we can install. So the idea of the second delivery controller might be if you have a uh, if one delivery control if the I'm sorry I always say delivery controller domain controller it's just because I've been doing uh, some other labs regarding delivery controller and that's the reason why I'm I'm saying that word. So uh, with that being said, why this is actually installing? Most of the time you want to have a. Uh, maybe high availability uh, so that in case you are restarting the DC1, DC2 is going to be up and that will allow your user to be able to authenticate to, to their resources because you still have one delivery controller up and running. So we're going to click on close. The server is supposed to restart and close and close and Boom, there you go. So let's wait for the server to come back up and now we can check it out. All right, so now we are back. Remember, we wanted to always sign in with uh, with a domain member user, not the local one. Okay. All right. Everything seems looking amazing. So we have a DC02 with a web worker domain. We have everything rock and rolling right now. From the DC2, if you go over here and you go to users and computer, okay, we're just gonna wait for it to finish. You see that we can see exactly the same thing here that we see here on DC1. So let's give it a test. So here, I'm just going to create a new user just for you to see a little bit how it's going to work. I'm just going to call it test user. And I'm going to say test user one, for example. And now just go
All right, say test user one, if I go on to the DC0R2 and refresh, I should be able to see the same test user one. Look at that. Test user. Say test user one, test user one on DC1. So just in case maybe you have these uh, off, then test user one can actually be able to authenticate on this server. So that is how actually uh, you can add additional domain controller to your existing domain controller and Windows Server 2019 uh, step by step. So, you know, like I always say, read a little bit more about Windows Server and you can start making some magic right here. So on the next video, we're going to create uh, a client PC, which is going to be a Windows 10 client PC. And we actually, we're going to join that PC to our domain server. And we're going to see how it works, how a uh, user can actually use, user that is actually on-prem will be able to authenticate with a device or with a client PC that is actually within the domain. So for example, most of you, you know, when you go to work and you just put in uh, your name, say so it's gonna be your company's name slash your name, and it's just going to authenticate and uh, everything just keep happening. So we're gonna see in the future how we can create our group policy to actually manage those users and then a lot of fun things. Thank you so much. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you. Keep learning. Have a nice day. Bye.